Thank you for joining me. My name is Megan Guerrera, and I'm the chairperson of the Farmington High School Building Committee. In our time together, we will review both the current and new Farmington High School. Please take note of the significant space, safety, and learning limitations of the current Farmington High School as compared to the many opportunities for engaged, inclusive, and safe learning provided by the new Farmington High School. Much of the high school was built when the enrollment was 800 students. Farmington High School now enrolls approximately 1,300 students. 10 additions have been added over the years to try to address the growing student population, but there are many spaces that cannot accommodate today's teaching methods. The proposed building provides flexible spaces that can accommodate a variety of teaching methods and a variety of instruction, including individual, small group, and large group instruction. The building also creates communities of learners by clustering classrooms around breakout areas, faculty offices, and support spaces. The new facility is planned for future student population growth over the next decade. There are 23 separate entry points, sightline issues, challenges in separating the high school boundary to public access points, inadequate lighting inside and outside of the building creates a challenging building orientation. The current parking lot configuration does not provide nearly enough parking. Clear walking pathways present safety concerns and do not meet current standards for school safety. The entrance will be obvious to visitors arriving at the new FHS. The single main entrance is centrally located at the convergence of car, bus, and pedestrian approaches. A wide pedestrian safe walkway leads directly to the front door. The school office is located immediately adjacent to the front door with a clear view of visitors approaching the buildings. During a four minute passing period, sometimes close to 1,000 students move through our hallway intersections. This creates crowded movement and not much time for students to get to their classes. The new FHS provides generous circulation paths filled with natural light from above. Major assembly spaces such as the library, cafeteria, and auditorium could be located along a central corridor, which is large enough to serve as breakout areas or as a lobby for those assembly spaces. The overcrowding we face at Farmington High School is experienced daily in our basic classrooms. They are occupied every period of the day, making it difficult to hold planning meetings, meet with small groups of students, or host special programs. The classrooms have ongoing problems, including a range of temperature fluctuations as a result of no air conditioning, ongoing leaks, and aging equipment. The remote second floor of the original 1928 building currently houses the art and world language departments. These classrooms are small, cramped, hot in the warm weather months, and cold in the winter. There is very little storage. In process, a completed student artwork clutters the classrooms and hallways. These spaces are only handicap accessible via the outdated and many times non-operating elevator. There are a number of students taking business classes who would tend to pursue business programs in their post-secondary education. Unfortunately, there is only one business classroom. Due to this limitation, we cannot keep up with the increasing enrollment and interest in advanced technology and business studies. Technology is at the center of 21st century teaching and learning, yet our entire data center is in a former classroom. The space is too small for the equipment and for staff to support all of our technology needs. Loud and distracting dehumidifiers are present in most of our math classrooms because of a moisture problem in this part of the building. This creates a challenging learning environment for teachers and students. The new FHS provides natural light in classrooms and other learning spaces. This photograph shows how light shelves along the windows can direct daylight upward and across the ceiling, making the classrooms very bright. The school includes movable furniture and technology for multiple learning formats, offering individual and small group configurations, and greater flexibility in the scheduling of classrooms for different departments. Teacher workstations could be located elsewhere in shared collaborative spaces. The lack of space we face at the high school is evident in the amphitheater. It was originally designed for special events and meetings, but must now be used every period of the day for classes and study halls. The new FHS provides large instructional spaces that are fully accessible and that offer excellent visibility of instructional walls, adjustable lighting, proper acoustical treatment, and new audiovisual equipment. Newer technology can be incorporated within the spaces to support distance learning and collaborative instruction from multiple remote locations. Our current music room is an example of the challenges that growing enrollment can place on a program. This space is too small for the number of students who attend music classes. Students often have to practice in hallways and stairwells. There is also insufficient storage for instruments and other equipment. 
Most importantly, it is not ADA compliant or accessible for our disabled students. The new FHS provides rooms that can support large and small group assemblies for music practice with the appropriate acoustic separation from adjacent spaces and with acoustical treatment within the rooms. The music room in the photograph is designed with a flat floor in order to maximize flexibility and the movable tiered seating can be reconfigured as needs change. The room has windows for natural lighting and sound absorptive and reflective wall panels to optimize acoustics. Due to a lack of teaching space, the science labs must also function as classrooms and workspaces. There is insufficient storage for scientific chemicals and equipment, which can create a safety issue for our students and teachers. We are very careful when working with them, but are still limited due to the dated space. The new FHS provides bench-centered learning stations with good sight lines to the demonstration table. The photograph shows a high school science lab with operable windows to enhance the work environment. Ample daylighting reduces the need for artificial lighting, thereby saving energy. Durable finishes such as seamless flooring simplifies maintenance. In applied arts classes, students work with power tools and all kinds of objects. The classroom is too small to expand on project opportunities, as these types of projects require sufficient space to ensure student safety. The new FHS provides clean, safe, and organized workspaces with adequate storage facilities for materials and tools. Shop infrastructure should include acoustic separation of spaces, sensible distribution of utilities, and ample ventilation with dust filtration. For safety reasons, power equipment should be spaced appropriately and have proper safety features with emergency disconnects. There is no access to the second level library for disabled students. The current library is not compliant with ADA standards. There is just not enough space for growth and student use. The new FHS provides a very visible, centrally located library with space for a variety of activities, such as individual study, small group discussion, and project work. Movable furniture can offer opportunities for rearranging spaces to accommodate evening meetings and presentations. The auditorium at Farmington High School, like many of our larger spaces, is inadequate to serve the needs of our community. A high school auditorium should accommodate at least half of the student population. Ours currently holds less than one-third. Additionally, the space is not ADA compliant. This arrangement is problematic for large crowds as entering and exiting the rows is difficult and distracting. Finally, poor acoustics and insufficient lighting for student productions hinders the capabilities for educational and community programming. A properly functioning high school auditorium provides a fully accessible space that serves the needs of the entire community as well as the students. It should act as a general place of assembly for everyone, as well as a learning environment for students, particularly those active in dramatic and musical events as performers, or as technicians in activities such as set building, staging, and media controlling. For that reason, features such as catwalks for stage lighting are designed with student safety in mind. Our cafeteria cannot accommodate the size of our current student body. Four lunch waves must be organized, the first beginning before 10 a.m., which is when food can legally begin being served. Those students are not only scheduled for lunch at 9.50 a.m., but they must also get their food and eat in under 30 minutes. This is difficult with the number of students assigned to each lunch wave. Additionally, a minimum of five faculty members must be assigned to monitor each lunch wave, which is challenging given faculty teaching schedules. The cafeteria is also used for study halls in the beginning and end of the day due to insufficient classroom space. At times, nearly 200 students are assigned to a cafeteria study hall. This is hardly an environment conducive to student academic achievement, and again, several teachers must be assigned to monitor these large crowds. The new FHS provides a cafeteria that can serve not only as a space for dining, but also as a space for other activities during the day and on evenings and weekends. The space in the photograph is a high school cafeteria, and it also functions as a ticketing lobby for the auditorium and the gym, as a concession area, and as an assembly space for various meetings and presentations. The old gym is too small to hold any athletic events. Therefore, it can only be used for storage, small practices, and some gym classes. The main gym is not ADA compliant or handicap accessible when the bleachers are pulled out. There is no air conditioning, so it is often very hot during late spring and autumn events, it is also located directly across from the auditorium, so these two popular areas must compete in terms of space, sound, crowd control, and parking. The new FHS provides a gym for phys ed and athletic team events and is large enough for major assemblies of the student body. 
The high school gym in the photograph features a roof with a sawtooth configuration that allows daylight to enter into the gym, creating a pleasant, uplifting space. This gym is divisible by an overhead gym curtain and contains retractable seating on both sides. The high school currently lacks adequate breakout spaces for collaborative class activities. As a result, students must sit on the hallway floors when doing group work. This is not an ideal learning environment. The new FHS provides ample opportunity for breakout spaces adjacent to teacher work areas and near classroom clusters. Breakout spaces that are comfortable and attractive can offer greater opportunity for spontaneous discussion, group activities, and interdisciplinary teamwork. Highly visible areas such as the one shown in this photograph can be flexible gathering spaces between classrooms and they can be the focal point of a smaller learning community. The location of the administrative offices in the existing facility is problematic. School administration does not have a direct view of the visitors approaching the building. In fact, the front office is located deep within the footprint of the existing building, quite far from the front door. Faculty offices are inadequate and they are placed in various remote locations in the existing building. This does not encourage cross-disciplinary collaboration among teachers and it makes interdepartmental planning very difficult. The new FHS administrative offices will be located in the main entrance of the building. This provides maximum views of people entering the building for security purposes. Faculty offices will be placed in each of the learning communities to encourage interdisciplinary collaboration. The existing building has been renovated and enlarged so many times that its infrastructure is poorly arranged, with multiple heating and cooling systems of various vintages, a bewildering distribution of wiring for electricity, and a confusing maze of piping for plumbing and drainage. This makes maintenance difficult and costly. Many components are outdated and replacement parts are no longer made. Most of the existing building is only one story in height, resulting in many roofs of different ages, with many joints between those roofs. The result is an existing facility that has reoccurring failures in its infrastructure. The new FHS is planned to minimize its roof area and its exterior wall area. The design uses energy efficient walls and windows to reduce heat loss in the winter and heat gain in the summer. Walls will have more insulation and less infiltration, and new maintenance-free windows will improve security and energy efficiency. The new mechanical, electrical, and plumbing systems will be arranged to maximize efficiency and simplify maintenance.